Hello everyone, thanks for joining. I'm Stefano Maestri, senior manager at Red Hat. Long story short, uh, why I'm uh, talking about uh, ChatGPT and so on, not because I'm a senior manager, but because uh, I'm passionate of uh, AI from the high school. And my, my, my thesis in high school has been about uh, neural networks and the same, uh, in the university and so on. Why I'm, I, I followed in the, in the dark side of management, I don't know, but anyway, I'm there. Uh, so, uh, let's start uh, uh, talking about what is a, a generative AI. Uh, this is a definition, definition that I've taken uh, from OpenAI. And uh, uh, there you can see there is a few highlight of the point from OpenAI. Uh, I'll leave you re read. Uh, I, I'm not reading for you, I'm sure you can. But uh, read my highlighted version that is a bit different because I'm highlighting something else uh, here. And basically, uh, that is uh, learning patterns from existing data. And from there, generate a new and unique output, my mix, human creativity. So this is the key point where I, I, I want to, to stay in my talk. Because uh, what is intelligence for Einstein? Uh, a famous tale about Einstein say that uh, he wrote this sentence on the whiteboard in the first lesson in Berna University. And uh, while uh, he was uh, Writing and in the end, he, he told uh, to, to the classroom, if you cannot uh, read this, please go out and don't return to my course. Uh, th there is basically the measure of intelligence uh, is the ability to change. And that uh, is exactly what Einstein did in all his life, basically. Because uh, the innovation that uh, we got in physics uh, from Einstein's come from intuition and not from applying pattern that we already knew. Basically, what he did is writing this very famous equation, okay? But this is not the equation, the point of Einstein's research. The point is that he had a, an intuition that no one else had before, that is the mass called change the plan of time and uh, the plan of time, basically. The, the, this is the, the, the point uh, of Einstein intuition. And the kind of uh, uh, intuition is not possible basing on what we know at that point. So what I'm trying to say is that if we just apply patterns of what we know, we will be still discussing Newton physics now. But uh, another example of AI, generative AI, is art. AI art is, uh, is a buzzword at the moment, and it's great. I asked the uh, generative AI to generate for me art. In the first case, I asked for a post-cyberpunk landscape. I asked also to, to don't uh, include skyscrapers, probably it didn't understand very well. But anyway, th this is the landscape generated. And in the second case, I asked the AI to generate uh, something that includes galaxies. And uh, this is an original image, uh, it's not a real galaxy, it's a generated image from AI. And it's pretty impressive and pretty cool. But I like art. And, uh, there is an artist in the middle of uh, uh, the previous century called Lucio Fontana. He is from Argentina and uh, lives in Italy. And is the, the father of the special, uh, of the spatial art. And spatial art is basically, and let's use words from him and not from me, that he is better to, to explain uh, his art than me. So Fontana, what, what does, if you don't know, is basically cutting the 
canvas instead of painting it. But he's not a deliberate act of vandalism. He is uh, introducing space between and uh, around the canvas and the light behind and around the canvas. And if you, if you look at uh, their uh, uh, art uh, in, um, uh, in, um, uh, in presence, uh, is pretty impressive because it's not just cut, uh, it's uh, really art. And uh, uh, what is the ability to change here, to invent the intuition of the art? Because in, uh, in the middle of the, the last century, we got the first images from the space. And uh, the first images from the space was like those. And if you see, now you understand from where it comes with his cuts. And, uh, you know, it's pretty different from the galaxy that, uh, that I showed uh, you before, generated from an AI. AI just take what uh, it know, what we know, the data. We gave it and uh, produce a really new content that is, uh, let me say, standard content. is not disruptive. And in this case, Art, but not only art, science could and should be disruptive if we want to evolve as a human being. And just to give you an idea of uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, intuition and applying patterns, because uh, everyone is uh, cared of uh, the artificial intelligence becomes too much intelligent. But again, is not the point of intelligence, it's a point of intuition. Those are two classical of lateral thinking. Probably you already know, and you already know the answer. Or if you don't know, we can get the answer together. Uh, the first one says, in the middle of a, a large forest, uh, the corpus of a man dressed entirely in scuba gear was found. He was wearing a wetsuit, mask, fins, oxygen tanks, and even weights. The sea was 15 kilometers away. The forest was not crossed by any road, and there was no means of transportation around the man, only chaired trees. Can this be explained? How can uh, this be explained? This is the first question. The second one is, a man is pushing his car, while some boys watch him without doing anything to help. He stops when he reaches in front of an hotel, and at that point, he realizes he has gone bankrupt. Additional information is needed here. The man was pushing the car with one finger. The fact that uh, we went, uh, he went uh, bankrupt didn't bother him too much. The boy also realized that uh, he had gone bankrupt and uh, started uh, laughing. I asked ChatGPT. I asked ChatGPT, and those are the answer. I go quickly. No, I, I have time, I think. So the, in the first case, uh, the, you remember the scuba man in the, in the forest? I asked, and the, basically the answer is, uh, OK, the situation described seems uh, to be a riddle or a puzzle, right? However, based on the information provided, there are some possible explanations. One airplane accident, and the explanation from ChatGPT that you can read. Pretty strange that uh, I, I was in an airplane in a scuba, uh, in a scuba dressing. Illegal activity. Oh, wow. Illegal activity, because probably the data uh, it had uh, is about a lot of illegal activity, because it, we gave it, so uh, we, we do a, a lot of uh, illegal activity. Prank hmm? or art installation in the middle of the forest, a scuba man dead is an art installation. Anyway, and, and then uh, it said to me, please note that these are only conjunctures based on, a li on a limited information provided. Without further details or context, it's challenging to provide an accurate explanation. Thank you. But he, he gave us something, 
And if you didn't uh, know the answer, maybe you are a bit closer now. That is, is not completely wrong what uh, he told us. The second one is doing better. Better, but uh, not getting the result, but much better for us. In this scenario, the additional information provided helps clarify the situation. Here is a possible interpretation. A man is pushing his car with just one finger, indicating that the car is a toy or a miniature version. The fact that he pushes the car with such ease suggests that it is not a real car, but a small scale model. Maybe, maybe. When the man uh, reaches in front of the hotel, he realizes he has gone bankrupt. This implies that he had been playing or pretending to be a wealthy person. But the reality of his financial situation downs on him at that moment. However, it doesn't bother him too much, indicating that he may have been uh, indulging in a fantasy or living beyond his means. Mm. Something. The boys who were watching him without helping realized that he has gone bankrupt as well and started laughing. This suggests that they were aware of this uh, uh, pretense of exaggerated lifestyle or find humor in his sudden realization and the change of fortune. Mm. Overall, this appeared to be a playful or symbolic sheen, illustrating a personal or financial downfall in a light-hearted manner. Not bad, not bad, very close to the answer. Anyone knows uh, now the answer of the, the two questions? The second one is playing Monopoly. The second? But yeah, just wondering if there's a part of playing Monopoly and you landed in the restaurant and you're on the square instead of a hotel and that the only key owed a bunch of money is that bankrupt or not, when you get to the lab because he's bankrupt and they're trying to get it. Uh, a bit easier, a bit uh, uh, no, uh, it's a bit more easy than that and uh, a bit more lateral thinking. Those are the solutions. The first one is the airplane getting the water to, uh, to, to stop a fire and got also the scuba. Pretty, pretty unlucky. Uh, and the second one is the very famous game. And I'm sure there is also there a car, a small red car. But again, uh, now, we, we have uh, very little time, but analyzing the answers from ChatGPT, we can get to the solution easier than starting from nothing. So, so what? Why use uh, generative AI and uh, why not overuse it? It's uh, an excellent thinking partner. As I demonstrated to you, it's a thinking partner. It's fast, it's getting more and more precise, could help a lot on better understanding complex patterns which may not be clear to us at the moment. This is a, a very important point because uh, uh, the, the first and the, the last one, because uh, it's uh, important to understand that there is pattern that we have and we don't understand. In, uh, in uh, health care, for example, we don't understand the patterns of cancers but maybe there is patterns. We need help to understand those complex patterns. And that this is an, excel, an excellent help. Why not overuse it? A disruptive thinking is needed for real progress. There is no progress with disruptive thinking. We cannot base our progress only on what we know until now. Otherwise, we don't progress. And real creativity needs some craziness. All of them are called mad sometimes, but they are all genius. That's it. <laughs>